a lazy Christian, but you cannot be a mature Christian who is lazy. Your maturity in faith comes along with also you being one person who is hardworking. Because the more you interact with God, the more you interact with scriptures, you understand that you resemble God and you have his image in you, this image of work. And therefore, even as your God is busy, as your God is not an idler, as your God is not lazy, so you must be. And therefore, even you grow because you understand better than babes in the faith. The greatest gift a parent also can give to their children, apart from helping them to know the Lord Jesus Christ, is them understanding that they must have that diligent work ethic. It is another blessing, it is another gift that a parent can give to their children. Yes, you can help them to know the Lord Jesus Christ savingly, but again it can be a bonus for you to help them to have this diligent work ethic. Help them to know work, to love work, and to be creative, even as our God is creative. This is another great gift that you can give to your children if you are a parent in this place. Work is more also an opportunity to win people to Christ. It is an opportunity for you to win people to Christ because they are able to see the image of God in you. They are able to see the difference in you. How diligent, how excellent you are in whatever thing that you engage yourself into doing. Because you are doing everything as unto the Lord. You don't do because your boss is there watching. You don't do because you want money. You are doing it because you love it. You are doing it because you are so passionate. You are doing it because you are doing it as unto the Lord. With all your heart, with all your strength, giving it your everything. Because this is what God requires from you and from us. Shoddy work to your boss, it is shoddy work also to your God. He has placed you there to represent him. But most of the times we fail in the part of us representing him in our workplace. Because we reason like the people of the world who have unregenerated minds. We don't see things like he sees them. We don't view things like he views. We don't act like he would have acted if he was in that capacity. And therefore we must understand that God has saved us. Not only to be professional Christians and confessional Christians, but also to live out that which we say we stand for. If you are wholly persuaded that your God is a working God, then you must live for that. You must work. You must love work. You must devote yourself to working and not to idleness and laziness. We are living in a society where many young people even don't want to live their parents, their family to go out and exploit and try other things. We want our parents to do everything for us. We are saying that, yes, circumstances are difficult and we ought just to sit down and wait for God to come. Dear young people, my plea for you, go out and try things. Do it as unto the Lord. Try, try something. Do something. Because even the Bible tells us that God will bless the work of our hands. Not the imagination of our minds if I get this job. No. You must do things. Don't just sit down and start imagining if I was here, if I had this opportunity. No. God has placed all these opportunities before your very eyes. Before you. And it is up to you to try, do something, and God will bless whatever thing that you do. Just like the work, the life of a farmer. They wake up and go and till and plant the seed. And they trust that God will bring rain and rain that is enough to bring yield. 
Same being a shopkeeper. They wake up every morning, they open their shop and trust that God will command customers to come. And in that way, they'll be able to have the bread of the day. Also for you, you must engage yourself into doing something for God to bless whatever thing that you do. So long as it is not sinful. So work is more also an opportunity to win people to Christ. You are to be salt and light in this world, in your working place. You must be salt and light. Work itself is godly and it is God honoring. So if you don't work, you don't honor your God. In as much as you may say that you are born again and you may know, you know the five solas. If you don't work, you must remember and I must remind you that you don't honor your God. You are falling short in that aspect, in that area. When we don't give it our best, then we destroy the credibility again of the gospel. When you produce work that is half-baked, again I remind you that you are doing it again to your God, not only to your boss. And you are destroying the credibility of the gospel. In everything that you do, see it as a platform for you to proclaim the message of the Bible. For you to proclaim to the heathen and believers around you in your workplace. You must understand that is a platform that God has provided for you. Difficult the work may be, but understand that you must give it your best. Diligence is very important and integrity in the work that you are doing. Don't destroy, don't put the name of the Lord your God to shame in the things that you do. Don't drag the name of your God to shame. Don't destroy the credibility of the gospel. God is honored by the work itself. He is honored by the work itself. Your work matters to God in the book of Colossians 1.18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. In everything, in whatever thing that you do, you must understand Christ must have the preeminence. Not yourself, not your boss, not any other person. But see Christ first, that you must have preeminence in everything that you do. So you must give it your best. Excellence is very important because you are doing it as unto the Lord. 